Hello everyone and welcome back to this mini-series on OAuth 2.0. In the last video we discussed a general overview of what OAuth 2.0 is and why it's important. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I strongly recommend pausing this and giving that video a run through just before you continue with this series. Now with that being said, OAuth grant types are simply processes that are supported by OAuth for authorization and authentication. So while OAuth is the standard for accessing shared resources, these are the methods that dictate how shared resources can be exposed. So in this video, we'll be covering the first of four grant types called client credentials. And in the next video, we'll look at how we can actually protect our own API endpoints using the client credentials grant type, since the best way to learn is by doing. So let's go ahead and get started. The client credentials flow typically works on behalf of the client and not the user, where a confidential client passes their client ID in secret to an authorization server in exchange for an access token. Now we know from the first video that essentially all we need to access a shared resource is the actual access token. And that's essentially what separates these different grant types from each other, as you'll see. It's the process in place that dictates how we actually get or retrieve that access token. Now, with that being said, this grant type is one of the more straightforward ones. It's typically used in a use case where the protected resource that's being accessed is not owned by the user. Instead, the client is accessing their own resources. So there's absolutely no user consent required here unlike the example in the last video, where we briefly looked at the authorization code example. Now, because looking at a use case is so useful, one scenario where using the client credentials grant type is the preferred approach is where an airline is retrieving a list of flight bookings. So in this case, the airline doesn't actually require the user's consent to display their flight reservation. Instead, the resource owner is the client itself, so the server can make that secured call to an API on behalf of itself. So now that we have a general overview of the client credentials grant type, let's do a deep dive on the actual flow itself. Now you can see that it's definitely not complicated at all. In fact, there's really only two steps involved here. Now keep in mind, our ultimate end goal is to attain an access token, which is all that we need to access the secure endpoint. So step one here in this flow is to make the access token request. Now you can see that the client is making this request to the API gateway. This can also be substituted for the authorization server that's protecting the resource in question. Now in my example, my resource is an API endpoint that I want to access. Now this endpoint is sitting on a reverse proxy service managed by Tyke. So the client needs to authenticate themselves for this request. This is first done through a post method that is made to the API URL, which is appended with the special OAuth token endpoint. Next, the API call has a basic authorization header with a token value. Now this token is the client ID in secret separated with a colon, and all of that is encoded in base64. For the body of the request, the service will also require the grant type to be specified which in this case is client credentials. Now here we also include the raw client ID and raw client secret as values to the parameters here. And lastly, when the request is sent off, the server is going to validate the client ID in secret. Now if that's successful, it's going to send back an access token response. Now in this JSON body, the client's going to have all the information that they need in order to hit that secure API endpoint. The first line in the body is going to be the actual access token itself. Next, there's an expiry date for the token, and then you also have the token type, which is of type bearer. Now you'll notice that it skipped over the refresh token, and the reason for that is because it's not necessary with the client credentials grant type. Now this is because the client is essentially the resource owner, so if they would ever have to make another token, there'd be little to no overhead in order to do so. They could just go ahead and do that on behalf of themselves. All right, and that's it. 
So in this video, we've looked at the client credentials grant type and understood its flow. So now it's time to use it to secure our APIs. In the next video, I'll show you how quickly you can stand up your API and secure your endpoints using this OAuth flow type. So as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment them below and I'll do my best to get you an answer. I'll see you guys in the next one.